All right, we're back again. It's time for Different Kind of Genius. I'm the host, Andre Kufo. Today with me, I know I say I've always got someone special, <laughs> but this man is probably the reason Geelong's getting half the attention it's actually getting. And without him, it just wouldn't be captured and we wouldn't be able to share it with everybody. So with me, I've got Brayden, better known as Brayden Fun Films. Brayden, how are you, brother? I'm good, man. Thank you for having me on today. It's nice to be here. Cheers. Bro. Thank you for making the effort to come down, too. Like, I didn't realise you were from Melbourne, and the minute I heard about that, I was just like, oh, snap. <laughs> nah, well, I'm actually based in Geelong, yep. but for the last maybe eight or so years, I've been up and down living in Melbourne or coming back here for a little bit, but currently I'm living in St Kilda, and I've been there for like the last six months, but before that, I was in Geelong for two years, so. True. Were you yeah. born in Geelong? Yeah, born in Geelong. Yeah. I stayed here all the way until I was um, 18, and as soon as I left um, school, I went up to Melbourne to live, so. That's sick, that's yeah. sick, that's sick. No, but how's everything for you? Like, you're blessed at the minute, nothing's giving you problems, everything's all right? Oh, yeah, there's always problems in life, that's, that's, that's part true. of life, I guess, but everything is really good, I try and always stay as positive as I can, and whatever comes my way, negative or good, I'm just going to tackle it and, yeah, get life to keep going on, so... Everything's Bro, been pretty good that, lately. Because yeah. that's the truth. Like, it's like a tyre. Like, sometimes they're full. Sometimes it's flat. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you just put a little bit of air in this and then we're all good again. That's it. That's it. That's what's up. So, what does Braden Fun Films do? Well, I'm a freelancer, I'm a videographer and dancer. I've been a dancer for 12 years, 13 years now I started. I um, specialise in break dancing. And for the last 10 years, I've been working in that as well. Um, I started teaching by the age of like 16, um, doing shows, performances. Uh, I ended up doing street shows for a couple of years and that was my main job for a while. So like busking on the streets for money. It's pretty cool. Um, got to do that with my crew back in Melbourne. Um, besides that, I ventured onto video the last couple of years. Um, started for fun. Just had the chance to get a cheap camera off a friend and film some dances. And then one thing led to another. I was filming some friends doing music videos. They were artists. And out of nowhere, it sort of just turned into a job. So it's been Shit. pretty cool ever since. It sort of made the transition from dancing into video work now. So I'd say the last year, it's gone from dancing full time for a living to like 90% filmmaking now. So. That's sick. Yeah, it's been really cool. It's been really interesting too, so. Man, there's so many questions I want to ask about that. <laughs> so, like, who are you dancing with in Melbourne when you're busking? Because that's a hustle that I respect. Well, my crew's called Fun Crew, and that's probably where, like, Fun Films has come from. Um, and Fun Crew stands for fucking unnatural. But we had to sort of keep it PG, especially, like, teaching and doing street shows. And Ooh, yeah. We couldn't really say we're fucking unnatural crew. So, F-U-N stands for fucking unnatural Fun Crew. Um... That's my crew in Melbourne. I also do like shows um, just with whoever hires me. So a lot of entertainment companies, um, always dancing with new people. But Fun Crew is my main like break dancing crew. Um, I got my boys in Geelong that I dance with as well. So Who are the boys in Geelong? Uh, Social Blight. Huey uh, Boy. Manned him in the background. He's in the back. He came here supporting me today. He's, he's always around. He's always supporting me. Um, we work together a lot. We dance together a lot. So he's always been there from the start. Um, Kip. Oh. Kit That's Kong, a day one. Kit Kong, um, mad crazy freestyle dude. Uh, Justin, Bo, Jeff. Fuck, there's a fair few. There's a fair few. We got a little t team down here that dances a fair bit. So That's sick. Yeah, it's cool. Man, and then not only that, like, going back to when I was a kid, like, breakdowns was always something I wanted to do. <laughs> but like I just grew up in a break real, dancing like, is something everyone wants to do at one point. I feel oh. like everyone's got the idea of like oh, I'm gonna do that, do that for a bit. So <laughs> no, but like did it all through primary school. Like believe it or not, yeah. with um fuck, what's the dude's name in Ballarat? Um, teacher? Uh, yeah, he's a teacher. Jamie, Jamie, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He was my cut. He was like a friend. That, like I had a friend like in primary school, and that was his uncle. Oh wow! So like he sort of looked after us all. Well, he started it down here. So he had a space called Existence, and he yeah, was in, Existence. from Ballarat was yeah. the like the main location. But he'd come and do um some classes and that in Geelong, and that's where it, I got the space for to like to go and practice. And I don't know, no, I didn't make Hugh from that. Me and um JB did like a workshop at a school, and we ended up doing a Hugh school. Came down there and like, do you remember exactly how it started here? Smoked me in a dance battle. That's right. Yeah, we had a dance battle. Yeah, smoked him. Um, and then ever since we've been dancing with JB, so. No, it's sick. But I just love how it's come so far. How you've taken a hobby like break dancing and now there's serious money in it. 
Like I've got Kip involved with like where I work and oh, he's yeah? now a dance teacher for like them. I'm just not saying who it is. Sick. But he's like, he's invoicing us, doing it all on his own. He gets to run the show. Like it's fucking sick. Yeah, dancing is cool, man. Like you just, especially with breakdancing or hip hop, like there's no right or wrong. So as long as you're teaching it, having fun and you're like doing the right thing by it, um, it's always going to be cool. And you're always going to make good money for it. It can be hard, but like, if you do it and you really put everything into it, you, you'll make it happen for sure. That's just like everything in life. Yeah, I feel like that's everything too. Like you just got to, you actually just got to do it. That's all it comes down to. But what can be hard about it? Because I never even thought of that before. For dancing? Yeah. Um. Well, I'll put it to street shows. Street shows is a good one because it sort of taught me, when I started doing it, it was the best job I had, but also could be like the worst job in terms of money. So we come out there on a day and it's raining or something. You can't do shows. You can't dance in the wet. No one's going to like wait around anyway. You can go into a city and just just no one there for some reason, just no one hanging out. So you can't start a crowd, you can't do a show, you can't get paid at the end of the show. Um, Wait, are you getting paid through like busking? So like you'd have so pretty much tips. So people walk oh, past. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. We started so we started just dancing first, um, and just we had a hat out and whoever put money in, cool, that was it, and that's how we'd make it. But then we sort of adjusted it into a show. So we'd have a song at the end of like our little freestyles, and we'd do a bit of choreography to it. Um, and then do a bit of a speech and say, this is what we do for a living. Um, yeah. We get money. And then it sort of built from there. And we're like, okay, um, you can make so much money from doing that. But how do you like make a better show? And we saw other buskers that were magicians or jugglers, um, acrobats. And they had a structure to their show of like, they started with an intro of talking to people and stopping them on the street to get them to watch. Then they'd do a little trick to warm up and then they'd keep getting bigger and bigger. And then they have a mad finale. And just before their finale, they'd do their speech about why they do this. This is their job. They need to make a living. Um, so we just sort of incorporated that into our own show and made up our own system to have an intro, have our tricks planned out nicely throughout it instead of just going straight away and doing your best moves for like straight away. So people are like, oh, cool. That's what they do. Give a little tip and walk on. We had to get to the point of having a full show and then explaining like, this is like what we do for a job. Like if you give us five, 10 cents or whatever poo change you have, it's like, it's nothing to you. Imagine what that is to five dancers that are like really trying hard to make this our living. And as soon as people heard that, we started getting like, our notes got from $5 notes to $10 notes to $20 notes and people just put in good money because they realize, I think the skill, the craft and how long it takes to actually make a show like that and just be putting yourself on the street to do that. But then it's also that because you've given them almost like the backstory to everything you're doing, that creates a connection with people. Yeah, so then course. all of a sudden it's not just an audience who's just randomly passing by. It's no. now an audience that's actually engaged with what you're doing. And like you've probably wowed them at the time, so they want to give back yeah, in of some course. way. Yeah, of like, course. And they want to feel connected too to it. They want to be like, oh, we got something out of that, not just oh, that we just saw a couple of kids doing some flips and tricks on the street. And not only that, I'm sure if a man slipped a 50 into your hat, like, yeah, that inspires something yeah. real sick from someone real yeah, quick. Yeah, well, the first like, couple of times we do it and we're like, we're just dancing on the street. And then after, like, oh, we got like money like to do stuff with just from dancing, like a skill that we like pretty much are all self-taught and learn through friends. Like, wow, this could be like a job. And then as soon as we realized it could be a job, it sort of became one straight away. So, yeah. Fuck, and then it's game over, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a bit like that. So we ended up doing that for like... Oh, I always sort of done it. Like since I was 16, we started. Um, but for like the last, when I was like 22 to 25, it was my proper job. Like that was how I was making my income. Yeah. And just for reference now, how old are you now? I'm um, 27 this month. So June 27 is my birthday. Yeah. 92, so. Nice. Oh, happy birthday when that time comes <laughs> Jeez, around. Oh, this will probably be live-ish maybe around then as well. <laughs> Sick. So, happy shit. birthday for future yeah. self. Make sure you say happy birthday to Braden Fun Films before he's a superstar <laughs> and just forgets about you all. <laughs> Nah, so you were dancing until 25, so 25 to 27, you were doing your film stuff. Break um, that down, what's that? Yeah, well, I've always, fuck, for maybe like the last five years, I started it um, just for fun, and, but like it just sort of got serious after I'd done a couple of free gigs and free videos for people and I did like maybe two music videos for free and then after them, once they got uploaded, it was like, oh, who's this guy? Like who's, who's making these videos? Um got hit up for some pay jobs and then every time a video would get uploaded from like another person that I finished I'd get hit up again for another video so it was sort of like a chain once I'd done the first two for free I'd get a pay job and then a different pay job and then another pay job just from all those videos together and just real quick on that was it your choice to do those videos for free was it more like a hobby that you were just trying to the, the first one which is actually filmed with like my good friends um juice box and lord halani yeah yeah, Goat. yeah. oh um, that was that, that was, was your first one I did maybe another two before that, but they were like 
Oh, actually, one of them's really dope. When I go back and watch it, um, Niletic, shout out to him if he's watching. Um, I yeah, did one for him. You, shout out, Lord. Did one for him, and I did one for another dude from overseas. Um, it never got released, and then the Niletic one did pretty well for just like first type of video. But it was goat that really changed it up for me. Like once people saw that, I think it was like, oh, this like really interested in like this type of video. Who does this? And that came from. It's actually only two years ago. I remember it was like pretty much August because I got really sick. I was on tour doing um, some work, film work. And I ended up getting like a really bad flu when I was over there. And I flew back to Melbourne to stay for a night. And I was supposed to fly out the next day to do another tour. Um, and when I was back, I'm like, fuck, I'm feeling really sick. Like my body was sort of shutting down. I was just like getting the hot sweat. So it felt like a really bad, really bad, like just cold, but next level. Um, message my boss. I'm like, hey, I don't think I can come in the, for the next tour next week. I'm just gonna have to stay here and get it sorted. Stayed here. I was trying to just rest up for the, like the first two, three days because I was back at home, back in like my comfortable spot. Um, and just kept getting really bad. I ended up like having coughing fits. Like I just couldn't move without just coughing my fucking guts up. Um, I used to smoke cigarettes back then too, and I ended up getting or well, having to go to hospital. Fuck. Um, found out I had pneumonia. Fuck. So yeah, I was there for like eight nine days in hospital um quit smoking after that i was like cool like not from smoking i got sick but it was just like cool this is maybe um not a good thing for me to do like i want to dance i want to film i want to be healthy i want to be fit i want to be the best version of myself and cigarettes just at the time I was like cool it's obvious it's not helping anything i want to do like it's like zero, zero. and it, like if anything would prolong that like those coughing fits it's just like after yeah, the first sick just just made it worse. It was a good slap in the face, like to be in hospital and just be like, all right, cool. You could be back here for the same type of thing. Just made me stop. But because I was away and I wasn't really working that much and just got out of hospital, I really wanted to do something. Um, hit up all the guys. I'm like, hey, I'm in Geelong. Um, I think I just moved back from Melbourne at the time. I just came back to um, Geelong for a bit. I'm like, I want to film something. Who's free? And that's, I think that's when I met Juice. I knew, I knew Lord Halani for a bit um, from when I was at uh, school here. I knew of him through other friends. Yeah, but then I just met Juice Lord and they had um, a couple of songs they showed me. And the first one that they showed me, I'm like, oh, that's, that sounds cool. Let's do a video Is that for that. Goat? Yeah, that was Goat. That's dope. They played in the car at um, the waterfront. I'm like, oh, this is, like, this is really sick. I don't know what I was expecting, but like, this is dope. My type of music, I feel like I could make cool visuals to this. I had some ideas that I wanted to try out that hadn't really been able to practice yet. So, And then we went straight from there and filmed it. Um, one day we just all kicked it, really, just a whole group of us got some footage and then I'm like, oh, I was editing that night. I'm like, this video is going to be really sick, but maybe I'll hit him back up again and like film again. Um, and yeah, we filmed for like two, three different days. And then at the end of it, it just turned out really, really nice. I knew like while I was making, like this one's going to be like something special. Man, that was it's the first really thing cool. I saw of Juice as well. Oh uh, yeah. And like Juice, talented rapper, Naki, shit, yeah, probably the best r and singer in the Bay. They're crazy. But man. your visuals... Was an extra thing that drew me in. I was just like, this all together, shit is it's like a, it's sick. such a nice package. When you first watch it, like, oh, the video is sick, but oh, the song's really nice. But you watch it again because the video is dope, and then you start to get like the song stuck in your head, and you're like, oh, like this is really good because it pleases everything, like yeah. visually, and it sounds good as well. It's like you couldn't have asked for much better. Hmm. Oh, cheers! And you did that one for free. Yeah, for free. Well, that was just what I wanted to do. Usually, it's funny to say this, but some, like I'd say like eighty percent of the time, the free ones are usually the best videos you do. Well, from everything you've told me, like, you put your heart and soul into it. And I don't, like, I'm not sure if that's because they're the homies as well and it sort of, like, it helps a bit more. It is that, like, it always helps when I'm doing videos for people I like. Um, if I like the song and I like them, it just makes me want to work harder. But it was at a stage where, I'm like, I had nothing else on and I really just wanted to do a video. Like, I was, I was so bored. I just really wanted to make something. So I guess that's when the best stuff comes out. Like, a free video because I had to do it because I had nothing yeah. else to do. I'm like, cool, I'll just make this one fucking banger, I guess. But then it's the, that, like, that was the launch pad. Like you did that free video and then, as you said, every video that comes out after that, someone yeah, else hits it, you up. That's the one I would say Goat turned it into a job for me. That's dope. Yeah, Goat really turns it into music videos especially. Um, Goat's the one that made that happen. That's sick. Yeah. And then like, and then you've done so much more since. So like that was, what video do you reckon has been your best one so far? Damn. The best one's a really hard one to answer. It's like best that I think or my one that's, done the best in terms of views or have gone around or got me the most jobs um start with the best that you think and then i want to hear about the one that's done the most because i'm curious to see 
what you think the difference was between that? The best that I think I got two different answers. And one is that usually my newest project is my favorite project. The one I'm working on right now, that's mine. Um, is always my best one. And then once that's uploaded and I'm on to the next one, it's going to be that one. That's probably yeah. going to be my best. Um, but I do have a video that's pretty special to me. Um, he actually filmed it. Um, I, 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 I did the edit. Um, and I'm dancing in it. So I got him to film me, which is a pretty big thing. I wanted a video of myself, but I don't like, I don't really reach out to many other people that do videography or in that area, ex except for Hugh. Actually, yeah. I, try, I love working with Hugh, but that one was like, I wanted something, I wanted something extra special. I'm like, I want to dance. I want to showcase my skills in this video. I wanted to have an edit, like something people go, okay, that's a fun film. Um, and when we'd done that one straight away, I actually think I finished it that night. We filmed it. I stayed at his and we worked for like maybe like four or five in the morning. And I think it was pretty much finished or like 90% finished by the morning. And that was my favorite one. Like I watched it over and over again. I'm like, fuck, like uh, it's a really weird one. Cause when I watch it, I was at a stage in my life where a lot of things were changing. Um, some really shit stuff, but also probably some of the best stuff I've ever had to deal with too. Um, and every time I watch it now, I just go back to that time of my life. I'm like, fuck, like, nothing is really, uh, I don't know. It's like, it's a real deep one when I watch it. I'm like, I remember exactly how I felt at that point in yeah. time. And even though there was some of the worst news and like stuff going on with my life, it was also like one of the best experiences and like learning and just period of growth that I've ever had, I feel. But that's life. Like, I don't know what it is, but there's something about the lowest of the low that brings forth the highest of the high. Well, and they always sort of nearly even happen at the same sort of time. Yeah, oh, I tell you what, when, I made, when we made this video, I had like issues from all over the place, like personal or work or family, all sort of hit me in the space of like two, three weeks. And it was like, fuck, I actually just have to deal with this. This is stuff that you can't run from or you just, you have to face. And when you face all your issues and all your fears, that's when you become that next level of a person, I feel like. And when you're at, the, when you're at your happiest and your best self is when you're going to have the best work. You're going to have the best life. Everything is just going to work. Um, so I had to remove all those negative problems and just deal with them at the time. And yeah, I think that's probably why it's my favorite video when I go back to it. That's real shit too. But mm. just on that, what are some of the ways, if you want to share them, like what are some of the ways that like the positive coping mechanisms you use to get through those times. Like two, three weeks, that's a long period of time. Like, fuck, it'd be hard to get up every day and keep moving and doing everything uh, you want to do. Yeah, look, I always try and think positive now. It's not, it's not a trait that I've always had, I felt like, but I can say the last five, six years, it's gotten stronger and stronger of that. Just when life, things hit me or like things come up, it's like, I'm always going to be here. I've always managed to live throughout the worst issues that I've been in and I've still been happy at the end of the day like I'm pretty lucky I do everything I like to do especially for a job like I really think that's fuck I can't explain words like that's amazing like I've never really had a normal job I've always just done what makes me happy and I've made it work like don't get me wrong sometimes I've had no money for a long time like like negatives in bank accounts and shit like that and people are like oh you must be so happy like you're doing what you love like I wish I didn't have to work and do that but these people can also be comfortable doing what they uh, I don't know if it's what they like to do, but they can, they've got money to live a comfortable life if they want. But I feel like it's when you have comfortable money, I don't know if you're using it to the best of your ability. And the fact that I had no money for such a long time, it's like when I get it, I really try and invest it into shit that's going to make me a better person, better videographer, um, whatever it takes. I'll buy the most expensive equipment that I can afford at the time just to make my videos that extra little bit better right now. Like I can't wait and get this shit. I'm like, I need to get it now. So whatever I can do, I'm going to do it in the moment. It's, it's by any means. And like, that's like, it's so powerful that you said that because it's so true. In the times where you've got no money at all, but you've, your head's full of ideas and all you want to do is do, do, do. <laughs> but then in reality, that situation is you can't because yeah. you've got no money to like <laughs> buy the camera to go and film this, buy the computer so you've got the editing software, et cetera, et cetera. But the minute that you get a little bit of money, you know exactly it where goes, it needs it to go. It goes into it. Yeah, it goes into the right things. And it's like, man, like, that's terrific. Like, that's like, that's such an important lesson in life. And for those that haven't experienced it, it's like, fuck, good luck when you experience it. <laughs> yeah. But you'd rather get that over and done with now. And then I'm sure it's a different story now. Like, you'll always have times in your life where you might not have as much money. But 
Because oh, you've yeah, understood that, you know easy. exactly how to spend it's it. It's so easy, yeah. Like, there's always times where I'm a bit restricted, but it's like, cool, I just got to learn how to live a little bit different. I got to adapt my life to suit the lifestyle I need right now. So the main thing I try and figure out is or just do is like be healthy, be happy, spend your money towards that stuff as well. Um, never like put your health at risk. Like you should always be trying to eat right, make sure you got enough money to do that, live right. But yeah, the most important thing is like invest in what you really love doing like don't fuck around don't just waste your money on shit that you don't need i'm still guilty like i still buy a lot of shit i don't need um but most of it i feel like is back into the work side of things which is like the truth of it like people like why do you buy expensive clothes it's like well so i look good in my videos like it's all <laughs> yeah. like it's, it's like that's literally like but that's part of the process like yeah, you gotta have cool drip for your videos for you sure do, you do <laughs> for sure you do no oh that's that's dope. I'm happy that you were able to figure that out. I'm happy that you were able to go through those low times and in that time, instead of like burying your head in the sand, that you were just like, fuck it. I was all right before. I'm going to be all right now. It's always like, what can you do now? Like if you're upset or if you're ever feeling down, just ask yourself, what can you do to make yourself feel a little bit better? Even if that's dealing with a situation that's uncomfortable or even if you're too scared of that, talk to someone about it. Um, there's always friends, there's always family and there's always like, professional help too like i think the main thing people need to do especially young young people is talk about it really talk about it and with somebody you trust and if like you don't have access to those people like as you said there's professional help and not only that people don't realize you can go to a doctor or you can get that shit paid for yeah get yeah. a mental health plan you can go see a psych there's for free a, there's actually no excuse for like to not talk to someone it can like things can be tough but there's help out there and you can really get it so go for it if you need it but what blows me away is why we don't do it. If you fall over and you hurt your arm, you go to the emergency. If you've got some oh, shit going on in your head, yeah, I'm pretty why bad. do you I'm not pretty like... bad with doctors and shit. I'm always oh. injured and I don't really get it checked out too much. But No, but I mean like if you <laughs> fell and you like seriously hurt your arm and like you oh. knew something was wrong. Yeah, that's me. Fuck. That's me. I got a fuck knee right now. So fuck. it's been fucked for a while. So I need to like get onto this shit fuck. properly. But like, like, and I guess I'm the same. I broke my wrist. Didn't even know for two weeks. Till my boss shook my hand and I had the burns come through and I was like, oh, oh fuck. No. <laughs> but then like going and saying that to show like, fuck, if you hurt your arm, you go to the doctor. If there's some shit in your head and you don't have the opportunity to speak about it with people around you, why would you not go and get help for that? Mm, straight up. And especially like that's that shit that'll stop us from doing so many different things. Like, yeah, it's a killer, man. Like it's a real killer. And that's what I was trying to say before. Like the fact that I had those issues come up and I sort of dealt with them as they came across in the space of two, three weeks, I felt like a different person straight after. I'm like, okay, this is the next stage of my life that I've hit. Um, and there'll always be new stages, but that was like a really big part of growth. And I, I know that straight away. As soon as I watch that video or go back to it, I'm like, I remember exactly what I went through in that level up just I had there. That's a powerful video. Plug yourself. What video is that? Let the people know because uh, even I'm curious. Like, it doesn't really have a name, but it's, uh, it's, I think it's the first video me and Social Black edited or like filmed and edited together. Um, it's on my Instagram somewhere. I think it's like the title is Fun Films X Social Black. I'm not the best with captions or titles. Wait, so we'll, put like, shit, keep, we'll put that shit it, in there for you. Yeah, we'll put that shit in for you. Easy. <laughs> no, that's sick. Yeah, so damn. So I guess the real question is how do you know that all of this is what you wanted to do? Oh, man. I, I don't know. For video, it's a bit hard to speak. It sort of just happened. But for dancing, I've always loved it. Like, my older brother was the one that um, got me into it. So he, he started doing it a long time ago. Like, I was, like, even younger than 14, I'd say. Like, that's when I remember starting it and doing it properly and sticking towards it. Um, but before then, like, I'd see him do some things. I'm like, oh, cool, hands are cool. Or, like, these certain moves are really nice. So I wanted to learn them. Um, and then just from learning it and meeting friends, like, dancing's such a cool one. You meet so many people and so many, like, things in life come from it. So I met, like, fuck, I met my best friends. I've fucking traveled a fair bit of Australia through it, just through work. Um, gone overseas to, like, enter competitions and stuff. And that... Doing that stuff by yourself is not that cool, but if you have friends and you have a crew to do that stuff with, it makes it awesome. So pretty much every time I dance, I have a I have a feeling of just like, that's what I like doing the most in that moment. Like there's nothing that really beats just dancing in the moment. Um, training is cool. Doing like competitions is nice, but when you're just dancing, you're only, you're listening to just the music and you're just doing whatever your body is telling you, like, 
nothing has beaten that feeling for me ever. Like, yeah, that's so powerful that you were able to not only one, find that feeling, but two, double down on it. Like, there's so many people that sort of know what they want to do, but aren't actually spending all their time and energy doing that. So to, for you to be actually going out there and doing that, like, fuck. Oh, straight away, man. As soon as I realized this is what I wanted to do. So I'd say about 15, 16, um, I started like wagon school. I didn't like hardly went, but I was going to training. Like I'd get my mum, shout out my mum. She's the best. I get, she'd give me money to get the train up to Melbourne, get dinner. And I'd go like three, four times a week, like leave school, go up to Melbourne, train with everyone up there, come back, wake up early, go to school, wag again, probably go train again, <laughs> come back from Melbourne. But yeah. Man, that's, so fuck, you've always wanted it. <laughs> and that's yeah. like probably created the work ethic that you have now. Like that's not easy for a kid to do. Well, I realized that when I moved out the first time. So about the age of like 20, I actually like moved into a house. Before that, I had a job with the circus. So I went straight from school from like 18 to the circus for two years. Um, and then after that, when I moved out, went straight to a spot in Brunswick. So Geelong to Brunswick. Yep. Um, and I wasn't really doing anything. I was teaching a little bit. And that's when I started performing on the street, just trying to make some money to actually pay for rent. And the way I started like treating it as a job was like, I need to make this like an apprenticeship. So when I woke up in the morning, I would like either go busking yep. or I would try and like hit up places for contacts to do shows or teaching at schools or whatever I could sort of do to get any job or make any money just through dancing. I didn't waste any time of like, oh, I'm going to look for a normal job because I can't pay for rent. I didn't want a normal job. I just didn't want to do it. All I wanted to do at that time was dance. So like whatever time I have, I'm just going to invest it into getting work. And within the year, I was teaching a fair bit. Um, I was making more money from street shows and I was just getting like performance work. So I like, yeah. get hired to dance through companies that just do shows for clients. Um, second year, same thing. Um, it just sort of doubled every year. I just kept treating it like an apprenticeship. I'm like, I'm not, if I don't have work, I'm going to find work somehow. Facts. Um, and at the same time, just improve my skills as a dancer. I just, as a dancer, sometimes I feel like they get a bit complacent in what they have. If they've got a job or they've got teaching work, um, they get happy with that and they don't improve their skills, but which is cool. Like anyone can do whatever they like with dancing. But for me, I was like, I never got the point of, once I got a job or once I had the skills to get that job, I didn't like, why stop? Like, why wouldn't you want to be the best dancer or have the best moves that you wanted to get at that time? Like, not just good enough to have these jobs or these roles. Well, you're just forever learning. Like, in, you, yeah, of you, course. Just, you understood that that never stopped. Yeah, of course. But I, like, now that I'm listening to it, is that, was that time in the circus? That, like, is that what taught you how to really do those street performances? Like, is that what sort of gave you that building oh. block to go out and do that? yes and no like the circus was a really cool one because it's the exact same performance so we had um a five minute show between sometimes we ended up with two people at the most we had was like four or five on stage but most of the time it was me and two other people doing the show um, what were you doing in that show i'm, just, I'm just curious about the circus element now like, a bit what of were you up to a bit of choreography yeah um like just, b-boy stuff yeah or, or b-boy like okay. i can't i do hip-hop and some other stuff if i have to for shows but yeah. i'm pretty cactus at it um I just do the tricks. That's what I'm good at and that's what I like to do. But we did a little bit of curry, some b-boying stuff, um, flips, some like little crowd like interaction stuff. But it was the exact same show for the two years. Yeah. We might have added little things or changed slight solos and tricks. But when you drill out the same dance move every single show, you get really good at that move. Yeah. Um, and doing shows every single day, you get comfortable with looking at a crowd or performing your moves to people. Um, so that really did help. But I was doing street shows before then, so mm. I got into I got into shows at like a young age. I was always doing like we did like G Pack, no um Paco. Okay, Paco, oh, Paco Fest. Was, that was like yeah, one of my yeah. first ones. So as soon as I started dancing, I went to JB Existence class, and it was like two weeks later. He's like, "Oh, we got a show at Paco. Do you want to come down?" Okay, so like my first two weeks of going to this place, I'm already like doing a show, um, and doing a show is fun. Like it's it's the easiest side of uh, the dance work. Teaching's a bit you got to be very patient and you got to, it's like classes usually go for 45 minutes to an hour, but where a show is like, you can get paid way more and you're just doing, sometimes I do one solo and I get paid. Like you dance for 30 seconds or sometimes a show can go for five minutes and go for 15 minutes, but it's never usually that long. And the show's cool. Like sometimes you perform at like mad ass places. I did like MCG, performed at Crown. Um, 
yeah, like performing at a young age is what's got me good at doing shows and yeah, just easy. Just comes from doing that. So you've just, you've always been an entertainer because I thought maybe that you might've learned that at the circus, but from the sounds of things, it you've definitely always like been formed it and made it a lot stronger, but I've always been like doing shows since a young age. So, and yeah. I've, I love it. I love it. Oh, bro, that's sick. That's like, it's such an interesting way of going about it as well. Like that time in the circus, I'm sure like when you made that decision, people around you were probably like, what are you doing? Uh, uh yes and uh, not really. Like people let you go because they knew that was what you wanted. Yeah. Like my mum has been really like super supportive. Um, And when I told her I had like a dance job, she was like pumped. Like she wanted me to be a dancer. Ever since I said, like, this is what I want to do, she's like, oh, cool, go for it. And then when I'm like, oh, I've got a full-time job working, doing dancing, um, yeah, straight away, she's like, yeah, sick, go do that. And she'd come up all the time, like, every month she'd come to the next place where you were traveling and, like, come watch the show. So, yeah, yeah. That's sick. That's sick. <laughs> Fuck. That's actually, like, that's an amazing process, too, because that's probably when it confirmed to you that not only do you love performing, but you like traveling and performing for a whole bunch of different people. Yeah. And the easiest way to probably learn that was the circus. Like it took you to all these different spots. Yeah, every like four weeks you're in a new spot. Um, we did mostly Victoria, Melbourne. Um, but I went to Tassie as well. We did like, we toured Tassie for a little bit and that was cool. Like Tassie's a beautiful place. But yeah, like two years of just traveling for every like month, going to a new spot and just doing the show. <laughs> right. Like that, it's, it's just so like, that is what like, every human being should want for themselves. Like you've literally done everything you love and you somehow managed to figure out how to make an income off it. Yeah. And like, that's the million dollar trick to life. Like that's what everybody wants to do, but just no one has that courage. And for you, you've just found that courage and you've taken it so, so, so yeah, far. I, I feel like that's all I've known. So yeah, from a young age, that's all I've been doing. And I don't know, I feel like I probably couldn't even work a normal job. I'd probably shit at it, but I'd, I'd really hate it too. But yeah, I just feel like I'd be, I'd suck at other jobs. But the, I know this is what I'm good at, so I'm just going to stick to this and I'm going to do it as much as I can. That, fuck. Like, and I guess you've always known, so you've always had that confidence. There's never been a doubt in your mind. No, nah, no, nah, always, always not going to do that. I'm, I'm going to dance for the rest of my life, no matter what, or I'm always going to be a part of it. Like, my body is going through some issues where I just keep getting injured and I've got to rest, but I'll always... I'll always rock up to events or I'll always be a part of doing teaching or shows or somehow I'm not going to stop doing this. And there's like, there's so much room for involvement. Like you can help on the production side of things, like help choreograph certain parts. Yeah. Of the like you've literally got work for the rest of your life. Yeah. Like, fuck. <laughs> that's dope. Yeah, that's cool. That's actually dope. So I guess like, what have you got on next? Like what's going to happen next for Broden? Um, at the moment, I'm really trying to push this video thing to a different level because I realized that this is what's working for me. Um, dancing's been cool. I've done it for a long time and it's always still going to be there. But the video side of things, when it's really good, it smashes all over my dance work. Um, I'm just constantly busy. I'm, every night I'm editing or like I've got music videos on two, three times a week sometimes. Um, but I want to sort of broaden it. Um, I'd like to do more than just music videos. I do a lot of other stuff, but I don't really share it on my socials or plug it as much just because I know that my specialty is in music videos or yeah. the special effects side of things. Um, so what other things have you been doing? I'm curious to know. Uh, well, if, you, like, if you can share it, that is. Like, yeah. Um, just like promo work for like, I've done like schools that have dance companies. Um, oh man. <laughs> Just some stuff that I don't really want to put out there, but it's yeah. like, I'm going to have to soon. Um, like I, I want to get into like wedding videos and just whatever's going to pay good money from still doing just video side of things. I want to just keep it, get into that. So Bro, from my position, that's some shit to be proud of. Like you get in a bag, even though it's something that you don't want to like pump out. Yeah. The fuck the dance school paying you for a promo video. Like, yeah, it's nice. It's up. nice. The commercial stuff always pays really well too. Um, I actually work with a company that specializes in um, indigenous communities. So they fly me around and I started actually teaching dancing with them first. So they'd um, send you around and you teach either like dance workshops for a week or two at a time in this one spot, um, make a show with them. And then at the end of it, you get like a little concert, they perform it, you do your show, um, get everyone up and involved. And then from there, they started doing music video campaigns. So they'd come with a team of like four or five, a songwriter, a singer, um, beat maker, filmer, editor, and we'd make a song with the kids. So the first two days we'd write a song with them, we'd make a beat with them, 
We and get you them. show them that whole process? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Fuck, we're, we're, working with, we're working the with the youth, youth the whole time. This whole thing's happening. Um, and then the last week, like the last part of the week is me. I film the video and edit it before we leave. So that Friday night at the end of the week, they've got that to show and they do their concert as well. That's sick. So that's really cool. That's actually a really special job. Like I've traveled to some next level spots, some of the best places I've ever been to in the world. And they're just like in our own country. So it's crazy. So like those remote, like indigenous communities around Australia, there's actually so much positive stuff happening around there. But for some reason, the message just doesn't come out to the rest of us. Oh, there's a lot of things that I feel like people aren't seeing that they should see. Like, people are very negative and complain about stuff they have no idea about. Um, where being in community and seeing the stuff firsthand is like, these people are beautiful. These kids are beautiful that you're working with. Um, and I, like the, they're the best kids I've worked with. That's straight up. I work with youth, youth a lot. I teach all the time. Um, but they're like special. And every time I do that job and I come back to Melbourne or I come back to Geelong from community, I'm in a different space in my head where like nothing matters again. Like we've got it easy. I can do whatever I want to do and I'll make it happen now. So yeah, that job's really cool. Fuck, that's powerful. That's like, that's a sick gig. Yeah, it's, like, fucking, it's fucking dope. No, 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 that you're upskilling them. So like, I'm sure every like young person that you go and meet over there will remember you forever. Like you've taught them how to possibly write, possibly make a beat. Yeah. Like you've just shown them all the steps so that even after you've disappeared that they can, if they want to, they can take that further and who yeah, knows well, what door will open We do come them. back to some of the communities like more than once. So like the second times I've been there, like, oh, Braden, like they remember you straight away. They're like, oh, do that trick with your hat. And like, yeah, they, they get you to do the craziest shit, but it's cool. That's sick. Oh, I just remembered, I just realized. So we spoke about what music video you were most passionate about, but what's the one that's like done it for you? Oh, look, the one that got the most views was Kiam Waiting. You've heard the song. It's it's like everywhere at the moment. Like he's actually killing it. It was his first single that he brought out. Um, I think it's like 40 plus million streams right now. Oh, no, dude. Because we were, Kip and them came to like one of my programs and the kids were playing it. And that was actually uh, where your yeah. name popped up again. And I think that's what put the catalyst in my back. And I was like, this man's got a story to tell. I need <laughs> him to come and share it. Yeah, that's probably the one. That's definitely the one that has the most views. Um, it's a funny one. Like, I don't think it got me a lot of work. Yeah, like I get work off videos that don't do, do that far, but for some reason, people the right people see him and hit me up and inquire about stuff. But that one was just like I got hit up to do it. It was his first ever singles, first ever music video. I'm like, oh, let's take him somewhere nice. Um, he's a singer. It's not like the rap side of things I usually yep. do. So I'm like, how can I make this different but sort of still a fun film? So you can tell it's my video. Um, and we just went all along the Great Ocean Road. Me and Hugh drove around. Um, went to like waterfalls and like nice beaches, and forest type areas filmed it smashed it out and then when the song got uploaded like it just went crazy like i don't i don't know how but just like straight away like whoa like people just must have really like okay this kid is something special as soon yeah. as they hear him and it just got plugged out right the first time and then the video fuck when the video got uploaded it just did really well but i guess like i'm sure if it's a project of yours you've been able to make it look visually like appealing and if the kid's a good singer like oh, it's, a, it's the same as the juice box scenario it's when you put the nice audio with the dope visual, yeah. it's game over. Yeah, it's like that. It's like that. And when I watch that one too, I'm like, oh, it's not like my other stuff, but visually it's pretty eye-catching. It's like, it's just pretty beautiful to watch. Like, it's a really easy stare. You don't have to like be like, oh, too much is happening. It's like, oh, it's just a very awesome song, uh, singer in just some like, really beautiful locations. So. That's sick. Mm. And I guess just... And with the two... Did you put in like, so like break us down through the process of that. Like how long does it actually take to film a music video? Fuck. That's a hard question. That's a really hard question to answer. They can take like a couple of hours to days. Um, It depends. Lately, my music videos, I've got like a process where it's just been getting smashed out really quick. Um, oh, so you've got your own sort of blueprint for it now. Yeah. For standard ones, it depends. Like if I get hit up with a certain budget. I'll go to my blueprint. If they've got like something special, they want to, they really want to spend some money. They like actually care about their project. I'm like, cool. I'm going to like try and take this to like a next level. Um, really storyboard some cool stuff, script out some certain creative shots. Um, but my, the normal process is just like, you can get it done three, four hours to film in a day. And then the editing side of things can be done in less like a couple of days. That's like how it is now. Yeah. But when I first started, like goat, goat took me it was like three full days of filming and like 40, 50 hours of editing, I reckon. Bruh. Like yeah. that's like, that was like, 
when we started editing for this, that shit was a nightmare. <laughs> like, yeah, you're thinking bad. our conversation is so simple with three angles, but nah, you're just like, no. Nah. Nah, it's not like that at all. But, like, if you just keep doing it, you figure out shortcuts. You know how to film it. It gets a bit easier. Like, when I'm filming, I'm, I've sort of got, like, a good, like, expectation of how it's going to look visually if, with the edit. So, it just makes it so much easier now. Yeah. And, like, yeah, I guess you piece it all together in your head before you go out there and actually do it. Yeah, at the start, yes and no. Like, a lot of it was just trial. Yeah. And like learning on the way. Um, Goat was so many effects I wanted to learn and I didn't know how to do. Yeah. Just smashed into a video and like probably overloaded at the time. Like I just cooked that video up. Um, I think that's what's like a bit special about it too. Like when I watch it, I'm like, whoa, like even from what I make now, the first two, so Goat and Rogue, they were filmed really close to each oh, other. Oh, Rogue's Manny song, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Shout outs to Manny. Yeah, that was Manny. He hasn't paid me for that video yet either. Oh, word. Oh, Manny, get your bills correct real quick. You've been exposed now. Shit. It's been, no. like, it's been like a year, but it's cool. No, but that was like, <laughs> I think that was just, it spoke a lot to me too. Because it was one, it was dope seeing a colored boy representing the bay. And then like, because he was representing the bay, it was all familiar. Yeah, yeah. I like that one too. So when I, when I watch it, I'm like, oh, like this is Geelong. Like, Geelong's fucking cool as is well, cool for you it's home so you're <laughs> yeah. just like you know exactly where to go and exactly how to put it out like it's nuts yeah so those two like i think i just overcooked them at the time because i learned all these new ideas and edits i wanted to learn and i just went nuts with it but when i watch my new clips now it's nothing really compares to like nothing's really similar compared to those two yeah it's to a different time of video editing i think so but then i guess the past you've gone like you've gone from working with hip-hop acts to like more singers doing commercial promo videos like It'd be very different if they all looked the same. Yeah, of course. And like sometimes I get hit up for like commercial work and they're like, can you send me some examples of like the stuff you've done? And the stuff that I got posted is probably not what they want to see. Like, I'm like oh, I can do a clean cut video. I've done that stuff before, but here's my cook that work with all these crazy shit going on. Yeah. <laughs> so, but you're just waiting for the day where like shit, one of those companies are like, this is exactly oh, what some we want. Of, like, yeah, I've done, um, I did a circus video not long ago and they wanted that stuff. They're like, we don't want no like ordinary video. We like want you to do your certain transitions and cook it up a little bit. Um, had a producer that owns his own um, just space that he hires out. He hit me up to do like a similar one as well. He's like, no, don't keep it ordinary. Make it like, make it your type of video. So that's been really cool. It's really cool when I get commercial work that still allows me to be creative. Yeah. And not just have to do a video that I'm like, I could do it and I'll make a good job. But I feel like if you hire someone for their skills, there's a reason you do it. You don't go like, compare it to tattoos. I won't get a, an idea of a tattoo I want by someone that doesn't do that style. I'll hit up the artist first and go, what do they do? And what type of tattoos do they have? And I'm like, I'm going to go with that. Well, that makes complete sense. It's like, why would I hire somebody who's highly skilled and then be like, yeah, you're skilled in that area, but, yeah, but this is this. what I want yeah. you to do. It's like, well, I should have gone that route the first time. That's it. That's it. And many people make those like mistakes. Yeah. I think with video, it's like, it's not as known. So people just don't understand it maybe as much because it, it happens a fair bit. I feel like, like I got asked to do a maternity photo shoot. I'm like, you seen my photos? I'm like a street photographer that does like smoke flares and goes to abandoned buildings and stuff like that. Doing a maternity shoot. I don't think it's going to link up nicely. Probably still could have done something dope, but... <laughs> Shit, if there's a bag there, it's like, go get it, yeah, go get it. Yeah, that's it, yeah, pay me, all right, let's yeah. see, I'll go for it. <laughs> no, that's like... <laughs> I'm just thinking about that now after seeing your story, like... <laughs> the yeah. the breakdance like... move with the flare, and it's like, all of a sudden you're in a maternity... Like, that'd look so funny side by side. Could be cool, I don't know. Hey, you never know. <laughs> Boy, Make it work somehow. A flare in that environment just might jazz it all up a bit, it's just like, shit. Oh, shit. oh h and I think, for the baby. Oh, yeah, that, like... <laughs> And the world we're living in now too, it's like, yeah, try it. I dare that's you. It's it. like, hey, not probably, a chance. It might go viral. It's actually, maybe I should hit it back up and go, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> as long as the baby some, hasn't been get born. Some views, <laughs> get some views. <laughs> no, fuck. No, but that's sick. I'm actually so happy to hear that not only have you found something that you love, but you've managed to capitalize on that something you love. And you've done it your own way. Like, just as you said, you're not trying to go that commercial route and make the same subline videos for every single thing. But you want to stay true to yourself. Yeah. Because you know that's like, for anyway, how I interpret that, it's like, this has got you this far. It's like, why would you switch up now? Well, I respect people that do that. Um, for me, I don't enjoy it as much, but I sort of, I want to get into it. It's like, it's a bit more comfortable. You're still doing video editing, you're doing a skill that you like to do. But I think the work is just there more. So for me, it's like, I would rather do jobs that I'm not too fond of right now just to get that money and invest it straight back into my other projects that I want to smash out. Um, 
whatever jobs I'm doing, if I'm not enjoying it, I'm getting something out of it. I'm like, okay, my next video is going to be even better because I've got more money to invest into that now. Yeah, you're not wasting your time. Nah, I'm not doing. I'm not doing jobs I don't want to do for money that I'm going to spend on stupid shit. Yeah, like you're gonna get that money, put it towards yourself. So for the next time you do some Braden Fun film yeah, shit, of course, of course. it's on another level. That's it. That's and it. you just keep him guessing every <laughs> single time. Yeah. Bro, that's sick. That's sick. But shit, I guess we're at that point of the day. And like, this is just where I ask the question that I ask everyone who's sat there. But I'm interested to see what you have to say. Braden, what's the one thing that you wish you were told as a youth? Oh, man. I feel like this is a really hard one for me to answer because I've been pretty lucky as a kid. Like I've had very supportive parents, um, my friends and all that. They all dance. They all do something creative that I like to do. Even my friends now, like all my mates are creatives. Like I'm surrounded with it. I did have a couple of teachers that said to me that this probably wouldn't work out. And you should have a backup plan. I think that's a really shit thing to tell kids like you're still developing when you're that age and whatever you hear from other people, you really take in and it sort of gets stuck in your head. But for me, it was just like a way to show everyone else, like I'm going to do this no matter what. Like, even if you say there's no like money appropriate situation for it, you can't, you can make a living off it. You can't make a living off it. It was more motivation for me to just get it done. Um, so probably like, oh, I don't want to put like a bad message out there, but I'd say don't school's not everything. Like, it's really not for me. It didn't work. Um, I tried to even go to uni as well. I tried to study for like four weeks and I hated it. I'm like, I'm, no, I can't learn like this. I can't physically sit down and have someone tell me to do things that I'm not really interested in right now. And when you just do what you want to do and you don't have a teacher or anyone saying you have to learn it this way, you, you're in the moment. You're learning things that you actually want to learn right there and then. I don't know basics for some video editing skills. Like I have no idea how to do certain things, but... I can do the cra crazy shit because I learned a tutorial at that time. That's what I wanted to learn. So just do what you want to do. Like, don't think there's rules to being creative, um, especially a dancer or a videographer. Just, like, do whatever you want to do. Um, yeah, no one can really take that away from you too when you're doing what you do. That's for sure. And you said, you said two important things. It's like all those people telling you need a backup plan. How can you go balls deep on something that you love doing and at the same time, use part of your like energy to start creating a backup plan just in case everything fails. Like that almost sets you up in failure. Yeah. Like if it's a backup plan that it's like another thing that you could really like and enjoy for, so for me, like I dance and I learned to do video after it. And that's sort of, that turned into a backup plan that turned into my main job now. Um, but to do something that you don't like as a backup plan, nah, that's not cool. And then not only that, it makes you think about it and not only that, you start doing things in order to be able to do that. Because I foolishly told myself that. I was like, I wanted to go, I had a plan, I didn't do it, but my backup plan was to go to uni and get a degree. Hmm. I was fortunate enough to achieve that, fortunate enough to get a job related to my field. That's cool. But then the day I was like, fuck, I wasted so much time, money, because uni was expensive, and energy, putting it into my plan B, because everybody told me my plan A wasn't going to work. And if I just like could go back, it's like, fuck, I would have went balls deep on exactly what I wanted to do instead of wasting all that time and energy doing something that, yes, it helped me along the way, but it's now led me into a position where I'm like, this isn't really what I want to do. So it's like, what was the point of absolutely any of that? Yeah. And I think a lot of us struggle with that. A lot of us, like, we almost listen to what other people say so much that it influences our next decision. Oh, yeah. It gets worse and worse too. Like this generation's really, it's, I think this is like the hardest generation to live in being like maybe teenager or just young adult because the pressure's on like crazy. Everywhere you look, there's like shit being blasted in your face. Like you have to do this. You have to have, you have to look like this. Um, there's a lot of issues. I could get probably like deeper into that, but it's like ah, oh, you got to learn it at a young age. I feel like just do what makes you happy now. The rest will work out. Like, you're always going to be here. You're always going to figure out a way to survive or make something work. You might as well be happy. Facts. And then not only that, if you're not here, it doesn't matter. Because you <laughs> wow. like... Wow, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, like it's like, well, whatever happens next is happening next for you. So it's yeah. like you can't get caught up in that. But at the same time where it's so hard for the generation now, it's also never been a better time. Like, we live in this age now where there's no middleman. So it's like, if oh, you really yeah. want, if you really know, or not even know, if you're willing to have a go, 
that shit might pop and that yeah. shit could change your it's, life. I feel like it's got a lot of positives and it's got some negatives too. Like this is a sweet age living. Like I make a living pretty much through Instagram. That's how I get 90% of my work. Social media is how, social media is how I get all my work. Um, and to be able to post videos and to show the world what I'm doing and then to make an income back off that. Yeah. You couldn't have done that a couple of years ago. No way. <laughs> like but I then, don't know how you would have started. But then the difference is you treat it like that. There are so many people that treat it in the other way and they're like, they almost copy in a sense what you do without the passion just to try and achieve the same amount of likes, the same amount of followers. Yeah. That's... But then that disconnect, it's like yours is actually a business. Yeah. You're using those platforms for good rather than to just fill in some spare time and have something to brag about. Mm. Like you're actually doing, you're using, you're using social media to help you rather than just letting social media consume all your time for I'm no reason. I'm actually not a big fan of social media, bro. Like, if you looked at my Facebook, I haven't posted a status unless it's... I haven't posted, a, like, a status saying how I feel or, like, anything rather than a video or photo for, like, maybe three years. Like, I don't care. Like, I, people don't also need to know my insides of my life on social media. Your close friends around you and family do, for sure. Always talk to people, but, like, not everyone needs to know what you're doing and what you're up to. But if you use it as a platform to share your work and get more work out of it. I think, I think it's a good thing, but I also like, I go back and forth of like, fuck, like, is this the right thing to do? Like posting videos up and posting photos up just to get work. Or is it like a thing that you have to feel like you need to like have people like your stuff or you need to like their stuff. Um, but now I just try not to overthink it and just, it is what it is. It's a platform for me that gives me work and I'm just going to treat it like that. And that's all you can do. But at the end of the day, like I'm exactly the same. I hated social media. Didn't use it at all. Mm. But now I've had to found myself starting to use yeah, it's it. It's a funny one. Like, if, you got a, if you've got a business or you're trying to start something, like you sort of have to have it now. <laughs> it's, it's weird. But then the difference is if we wrote on Facebook how I feel, you'd find out real quick that no one actually cares. <laughs> so it's like, why am I doing that? Yeah. But when you do something that like you're passionate about, people that care will give you that like, will give you that acknowledgement. Mm. People that don't care will continue to do them. Yeah, that's it. So it's like you can't be mad at them and you can't be mad at yourself as long as you're happy doing what you're doing. Fuck, go get a bag, do yeah. whatever you want to yeah, do. that's it, that's it. No nah, shit. Brayden, like, I couldn't thank you anymore for coming down. Oh, thanks for having me, bro. It's cool. Man, like, there have been so many people that have said that, like, I need to have this conversation with you and I just, I've never met you before. Sick. And weirdly enough, people were saying how they want to be there for that conversation. Yeah, here it is. I guess, so yeah. it's like, I hope I lived up to it. <laughs> no, no, like, man, I'm sitting here feeling motivated as fuck. Like, oh, I'm sitting it. here that's and I'm it. like, that's it. it's just nice to be around people that have one, found what they truly love, and two, double down on it. Because you get like, I'm in this space now where people are like, fuck, you really going to spend your time doing that? I'm like, fucking oath I am. Yeah, of course. Like, I don't want to spend my time doing this shit. I don't yeah. care about a salary. Like, I don't care about the yeah, same yeah. things that you're trying to achieve. What I want and what they want, different. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if it all goes south, fuck it. I'll deal with it then. If it all goes yeah, up, At least you got to I'll do like something sick. you liked in that time too. Like, no one can take that away from you. If this doesn't end up or it doesn't work out good, fuck, who cares? You've done something cool at that time that you really wanted to do. And not only that, it could be the door, like the opening of another door. Ah, oh, it will be, bro. I have no doubt. If you, if anyone cares about what they do and they want it to work, they'll make it happen. Facts. Don't make it happen straight up. And then like, man, that, that's something I live off by any means. It's like, doesn't matter. Don't get in my way because I'm going to do yeah, what do it, man. I want to do, especially if I love it. Spent the majority of my life doing shit that I didn't love. Fuck. Now I'm finally doing some stuff <laughs> that I love. Like, try and stop me. That's it. Try and stop me. But Braden, thank you so much for coming down. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for sharing your insight. Lastly, like, tell the people where they can find you. They'll be sitting here listening to all this shit. They can... I want to see that. My main plug is Instagram, so Braden Fun Films, um, YouTube, Braden Fun Films, and Facebook. I got a, if you type in Braden Fun Films, you're going to find me on all those platforms. So go suss it out. Music videos, photography, whatever you like, even just some cool explores that I do. Follow my page, you'll see what I'm all about. Oh, and watch your stories. I fucking <laughs> paid attention to that shit today, and I was like, what the actual fuck? <laughs> when you see him, tell him it's fire, because that shit is. But thank you, everyone. That's another episode of Different Kind of Genius done. I'll see you guys next time. Stay safe. One love. Brayden. <laughs>